Hey, IJY friends, it's Colette here. And yes, it is time for another IJY Connects Classroom. And tonight, guys, we've got a really special one for you. So thank you. I appreciate you guys tuning in and logging in. I already see some people going ahead and starting to log on. So that's exciting. Thank you. Um, while we're waiting for everybody to get logged on, it's just seven o'clock now. We'll go ahead and do a little housekeeping. A um, couple things. Few of you have asked me um, if you want to see classes that you've missed. Or some of you want to repeat the classes because you enjoyed them so much and learned so much out of them. You can do that. If you go to our group, our HS Yoga group, under guides at the top, we have all the different classes from January and February listed there. So you can go back and watch those. Um, you can also go to our IJYConnects.com website. And there we have our past links to our different classes, our upcoming classes, our upcoming in-person classes. Um, information about it's just yoga fest on April 25th say yay um, we also have information on the IJY connects membership and you can even sign up for our newsletter there so that's IJY connects.com okay so it looks like we're getting some people logging in I see people say hi go ahead and send me some love send me some hearts let me know you're out there um, so I'll go ahead and keep things moving because I know you guys are excited to get started Tonight, we have a very special speaker. Her name is Janie Williams, and she is of Janie Williams Wellness. Janie is a holistic nutritionist as well as a wellness coach. She's also a wife, a mom, and a local expert living right in Central Florida in the Lake Mary area. So she's one of our local people here. Um, Janie was introduced to me by another IJY Connects member, Dr. Brooke Stewart, and I want to thank Dr. Brooke for introducing her because as soon as I met her, I knew I was hoping to be able to work with her. And as soon as Janie told me she would do one of these IJY Connects classes, I was so excited, both for me, but also for you, my members, because I know you're going to love what she's going to teach you tonight. So in saying that, hey, Henry, I see you're on and Kathy's on and I think I see Suzanne. Hey, guys, thank you for logging in tonight. I appreciate it. Oh, look at it. My mom's there. My mom's always there. Thanks, mom. Hi. <laughs> um, so tonight, Janie is going to be talking to us on ways to optimize your metabolism. And we did mention that she's a holistic nutritionist. So let's guess that it's going to probably be some natural ways to optimize our metabolism. And the biggest thing I love about her program is it's simple and easy to use. And she calls it the fundamental five. So I'm going to bring up Janie now. She is down in our virtual green room. And let me click here and bring her live. I can get my mouse working. There we go. And there she is. Hey, technology. Hi. I know technology is such a wonderful thing. Hi, everyone. It's so exciting to be with all of you this evening. And of course, you, Colette. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me. Certainly. I'm going to give you a you have the screen because I know you can take it from here, girl. And, <laughs> and, and can I just tell you, I love that you call me Janie because that my, uh, my mom, as a nickname growing up, always called me Janie. So I, I was introduced to you by that by Brooke too, Jane. That's so cute. I I'm love it. Uh, no, don't be sorry. I love yeah. it. It's it's the sweetest name, and I haven't heard it in so long. I'm like, I'll take Janie. Janie, that's awesome. <laughs> Over the bang. So here's Jane, uh, <laughs> aka so Jane. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So exciting to be with all of you. Give me a hey. I want to say bonjour. Oh, I like that. Please say hello to me so that I can see who is here. I see Henry. I see Lisa. And as you're coming in, make sure you say hello. I want to know who I'm talking to. I am such a people person. Like I, it's tough for me. I do a lot of webinars, you know, all of that. But I love to see people. So you have to say hello. Make sure you're asking some good questions. Hey, 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 Lori. Um, and definitely interact with me because that's what this is all about. This is truly about just learning, um, asking questions, you know, sharing all of that really good stuff. That is why I do what I do. And that is why I love to empower and to teach and to educate people around nutrition and how important it is. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Chris. Hi, Kathy. I love this. Yes. So let's keep the hellos going. And um I am not sure if I'm going to be able, Colette and I were just working through this. I made a, some beautiful slides for you guys. 
If we can't use them, I will just go through it and you know, we'll just have a good discussion. We'll talk about the fundamental five. We'll talk about nutrition. I'm going to teach you guys some super simple nutrition tips. What I teach hundreds of clients. Uh, I've been in the wellness industry for over 10 years. Um, my actually way back when, just so you have a little bit of background information about me, in my 20s, I was a broadcast journalist. Um, I worked in television and um, I was pretty much a health disaster. I had raging irritable bowel, um, anxiety issues. I dealt with a lot of infertility. Um, so all of that was really wrapped around that brain gut connection. And probably my diet had a lot to do with it as well because I did not eat well. Um, and when I finally empowered myself, started to do some research, I just started to really dive in to nutrition. And at the time, nobody was talking about gut health or any of that good stuff. This is, you know, way back in the early 90s. You guys remember the fat food or the fat free food craze? Remember snack wells? That was that time. And nobody was talking about gut health. Um, but I knew I had a serious gut issue. And I didn't at the time understand that our brain and gut are connected, that we truly have this super connection information highway. We've got our vagus nerve in there. We've got all of these neurons that are constantly working for us. And if we're not feeding them properly, and if we're not balancing our diet, if we are not making sure that we are not on a sugar roller coaster constantly all day long, we, we suffer. So, I learned that the hard way, unfortunately. And I know so many of us, you know, we have our challenges, right? We have our health journeys. So I want to empower you guys today with what I've learned. And I took it to the next level. I ended up healing myself. I got off medication I was on. I went back to school. And it is a life passion. And if you don't get that by the end of, from me, I have not done a good job. But this is my life's work. My life's work is learning and educating and really just making sure that I get the message out at how nutrition should be simplified. So I'm going to try to share my slide and my screen here. Let's see if it works. Well, everybody cross your fingers for me and you guys will have to tell me if it works. OK. Um, OK. Oh, I think we're going to be in luck, you guys. All right. Here we go. Now, here's the only thing. I'm sharing it now. I can't see you guys. Can somebody just give me a, he um, a thumbs up if you saw my screen? Can you see my screen? My slide deck, it says Fundamental 5. Can somebody give me a yes or a hello or a no? See it. Thank you, Colette. Awesome. All right. So let's talk the Fundamental 5 because I want to empower you guys with some great information that you're going to take that you can put in. And I, I really, I mean, I'm hopeful that you're going to learn a couple of things here tonight. And here's the kicker. Stick around until the end because I have a beautiful bonus that I have created for you with the help of my amazing assistant, but that I have put together for you guys with the fundamental five principles some of my very favorite fundamental five recipes. And if you stay to the end, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to get this ebook. And literally, it's hot off the press. You guys are the first to get it tonight. Okay. So, what is the fundamental five? Well, number one, healthy should be simple and tasty. That's exactly where I start. I want food that tastes good and I want it simple. I've, I've always been like that. I love to cook, but I don't want to cook with 50 ingredients. I want to cook with simple whole foods. And I think most of you here are right there with me or you wouldn't be in this beautiful IJY community. So healthy should be simple and tasty. You want to fuel your body to support digestion and balance your blood sugar, right? And we're all aging, my friends. We all know that, right? And it's important that we learn how to balance our blood sugar. And that is a direct connection to, to your gut microbiome. And that's what the Fundamental Five is all about. So the Fundamental Five provides a healthy dose of all these pieces to support your body without feeling like a diet. And it's not a diet. And I, I do not prescribe to any diets unless you are in a medical issue, challenge, 
that you have to prescribe to a certain diet, but even diets, eventually you have to get off of and you have to create a lifestyle. So it's about building a healthy lifestyle that supports your body, nobody else's body, but your own, right? Because we're all uniquely different. We're bio individuals. So the fundamental five is not a diet. It's a foundational, I call it a simple lifestyle system. And it helps you to hit your nutrition goals. You feel calm, full, satisfied, no matter what your specific nutrition plan is, it works for you. So when you feel full and satisfied, it's much easier to stay on track and focus throughout the day, right? We all know, we've all, I'm sure, I want to say 99.9% .9 of us have all had cravings, you know, those things. And how you can tell the difference between a hunger cue and a craving cue is that a hunger cue actually slowly comes on. It tells you your body is getting ready for that next meal versus a craving that's very sudden and it's very demanding. It wants certain things, right? Most of the time, they're things that we don't want in our body, things that we know don't serve our body, right? So why did I create the fundamental five? Ooh, I'm so glad you asked. Good question. I created it to help you remember five simple things that should be included in every meal to ensure you're getting beneficial nutrients, the right balance of foods to manage your hunger. We talked about hunger cues, keeping your hormones in check. Again, another super important reason, right? Supporting your gut health and of course your blood sugar. So all of those reasons, and we wanna check the boxes on all of those, right? So what is it? The fundamental five, this is why you need it. You need protein to help you feel full and also build a, and maintain muscle mass. You need fat, healthy fats that can help you kick cravings. And since it slows down, Fat actually slows down digestion of your food and makes you feel satisfied. And those are some of the tricks I'm going to teach you guys tonight, too, how to utilize fat. Fiber. Oh, we need fiber for so many reasons, especially our gut health. But it helps to keep you full without elevating your blood sugar. No blood sugar spikes. Plus, it feeds healthy probiotic gut bacteria and detoxifies your digestive system. We need to keep things moving, right? Everything should be flowing in one direction. Greens. Greens provide crucial nutrients and micronutrients needed to help your body fight inflammation and stay well. In addition to that, I like to say, drink your water and eat your water. And what I mean, what I mean by eat your water is when you eat greens, you're also getting a healthy dose of hydration. In addition to all the fiber and the micronutrients in there, you are getting water, which is so important, right? All day long, we should be hydrating. I like to call it hydration with benefits. It's so important to get that. And then superfoods, spices. I have to be honest with you guys, spicing superfoods, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm passionate about it. And anybody that follows me on social media, if you read my blogs, if you subscribe to my community, you know just how passionate I am about it. And there's going to be some really cool stuff that I'm putting out there around that as well. That is part of the fundamental five. Why? They, well, number one, it helps reduce inflammation in your body, especially if you utilize superfoods and spices synergistically. And I'll explain what that is. And it protects your organs and it boosts your metabolism. Things like cinnamon and ginger and turmeric, curcumin, right? Which is in turmeric, the active component, pepper, cayenne, oh, all those really good spices. And if you use them synergistically, which means putting the right spices together, they actually work together for dual benefits in your body, which is really cool. Okay, so here's the basics. In when you include everything that includes the five fundamental pieces in every meal, and that includes smoothies, your bowls, your plates all day long, every single meal that you have, what you are doing, doing is ultimately turning off hunger hormones, which means, again, you feel satisfied. It burns fat more efficiently. You should be a fat burning machine. And I don't, I, I, a lot of times I'll have clients come to me and they'll say, Jane, I, I don't understand. I'm, you know, and they're very frustrated and I get it. I eat very clean, yet I still can't lose weight. What is going on? 
And what is happening is it's called insulin resistance. And a lot of times we think we are actually, we've got all those components, but in actuality, we are pretty lopsided on our plate. We have more foods that are higher in sugar. We have more high starchy carbs than we realize. And so coming to work with somebody like me, um, somebody that really focuses on that balanced component and those fundamentals, all of a sudden, just making those little tweaks changes everything. Your metabolism starts to run. And that's what we want to be. We want to be fat burning mas machines. Also regulate your blood sugar for four to six hours. When you eat a balanced meal with those five components on it, you nine times out of 10 should not need snacks, right? Sometimes we do. Sometimes we do because if we are really active, if you're doing a lot of yoga or if you're working out, doing a lot of cardio, you have a very busy job where you're moving a lot throughout the day, you're burning faster. So sometimes we're just not getting enough at that meal and we do need snacks. But our goal is to make sure that we've got what we need on our plate so we don't need those snacks as frequently. Okay, so I kind of just put together a little quick reference guide. And again, like I said, it, you don't have to like memorize this. You don't have to take a picture of it. I'm going to give you some goodies to go home with. So you just have to wait to the end and I'll tell you exactly how to do it. Okay, so but this is a quick reference guide. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this. This is the way that I've done it and has proven really effective for a lot of my clients. So I kind of use the hand as a reference guide. Um, I'm not a big calorie counter unless it's, again, for a very specific medical reason. But I like to use the hand serving size. The pro When you look at your protein, animal or vegetable, uh, vegetarian protein, your size and thickness should be one to two palms, right? Liquid fat, healthy liquid fat. We're talking avocado oil, coconut oil, ghee if you do ghee. Um, olive oil, things like that, one to two thumbs, right? That's our thumb. And then whole food fats, one to two thumbs to, from the bottom. So from this portion all the way up to the top. So this is kind of your model, right, when you use it. And then, of course, fiber and greens. I put two to four fists in there, but my friends, Put as much as you possibly can of those fiber and those greens, especially, again, that lower starchy stuff on your plate. Make sure you're getting it. And I also included some high heat oils in there and some medium heat and cold juice. Feel free to take a picture if you want. But again, I've got some goodies for you. Um, in addition, I talked a little bit about non-starchy carbs versus light starchy, which I haven't talked about versus high starchy carbs. So what's the difference? What are they all about? Why are they important? And why do you need to know about them? Well, high starchy carbs convert to sugar very quickly in your body, where low starchy carbs convert very slowly. And again, if you are utilizing that proper methodology of a fundamental five plate, right, if you've got that healthy protein on there, if you have that healthy fat, and then you're putting your starch and vegetables are and roots, vegetables are starchy carbs in different categories. But if you do all of that, you're actually even slowing down how that is absorbed in the body, right? That process in the body. And what you're also doing is you're allowing for that nutrient absorption to work a lot better in your body, which is so incredibly important. We talk a lot about macros. I'm sure you've heard macro, macro, macro. But as important as macros are in the body, micronutrients are equally important. And we also have to talk about our gut health when we talk about that. Why that's so important with gut health is because we've got all these beautiful microbes, I call them, microbes that are in your gut, on your body, in around your body. We are more microbe than we are human. And we've got trillions of microbes that live within our body, within our gut. And those microbes are working for us every single day. If we are not feeding them properly with, I'm sure you've heard of pre prebiotics, that fiber, really good fiber, they are not going to be able to do their jobs. And what we are learning in nutrition science, which I just 
love. It's so fascinating. We're, it's changing and evolving so quickly. But what we're learning almost by the day is just how important that spe very specific probiotic, that good gut bacteria is for different processes in the body. And we have also learned that specific strains of bacteria do different things. And I kind of liken it to this example, just like you wouldn't feed a tiger the same thing that you would feed a dog, you wouldn't feed a certain microbe the same thing that you would feed an other microbe, another you know good gut bacteria, another bacterial piece that's working for us. They like to eat different types of fiber. They feed on different types of fiber. That is why you we stress, nutritionists stress, variety in your diet. Why it's so important to get so much color in your diet, the rainbow of color. It is really important to be doing that every single day. And the more that we're getting of that fiber, the better we're feeding them, the better they're doing their jobs, the better we feel. And the better our system, our overall system is working, is functioning for us. And that is the truth. And a lot of times we do think we're doing a good job, but even slight imbalances can cause issues. And what we've learned too is that, again, depending upon you, your body, your lifestyle, not all foods work for you. So it's that's another important thing. You have to eat for your body. So this is just a quick reference guide of different types of starch, non-starchy, which again, keep them coming on your plate, I say. Bring them on, the artichokes, asparagus, bamboo shoots, beans, uh, bean sprouts, broccoli, cruciferous vegetables, so incredibly important. Brussels sprouts, even broccoli sprouts. I love broccoli sprouts or broccoli microgreens. All of those microgreens, those baby, nutrient-rich, high-density foods. Put them all on your plate. I love the variety too. Cauliflower, carrots, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, all of those great things. And the list goes on and on. I won't read them all. Then from there, that's kind of, I call it the cream of the crop. No pun intended, but all the puns intended. Then we've got the light starchy. You, you're, you guys will learn. I'm a little, you know, I'm a, I'm a little funny when it comes to that. At least I try to be anyway. We'll see if my humor resonates. But um, then we've got the light starchy carbs. So things like beets, squash that are a little bit higher in sugar, yams and sweet potatoes, but so incredibly important nutrient wise, vitamin wise starchy high carb vegetables and grains things like potatoes um but again these are also still grains rice quinoa amaranth not that they're not okay to put on your plate you just want to put a smaller amount on your plate and you want to make sure you have a larger amount of the healthy fats and all of the other low lower carb lower starch vegetables so that's really important to remember um also fruit. Fruit is really important. And fruit also, depending upon the fruit, carries different levels of sugar content. The nutrient-dense fruit, highest in phytochemicals chemicals and antioxidants, all that really good, those amazing for you plant chemicals are, and I like to call it plant blood too. It's amazing, that chlorophyll, all of those pieces blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, especially right now in Florida, my friends, we're walking into strawberry season. And then right behind that is blueberry season. If you ever wanted to eat a strawberry or blueberry in your life, now is the time to do it because we can get it local. Actually, I was just in um, a supermarket the other day, Sprouts, they had fresh Florida strawberries. We know that they're close to us, right? They didn't have to travel on a truck. They haven't been sitting on a shelf for how God knows how long. We know they are most right now nutrient dense, eating in season, so important. Fiber rich fruit, enjoy a, one single serving a day. Things like apple, full of fiber, kiwi, pear, orange, peach, plum, apricot, nectarine. Again, if you are gonna enjoy them and you wanna enjoy them for a snack, Pair them with a little healthy fat, something like apple and nut butter, right? That's really good because then what you're doing is you're slowing down that the higher starch that, that is in that, which will convert to sugar quickly. And then there's those high sugar fruits. Not that they're not micronutrient dense. Definitely there's a place for them. They are 
wonderful. I love frozen cherries in a shake, but you just have to be mindful about how much you're putting on your plate, especially if you're someone that's working um, towards lowering your weight or you've got, you know, any type of health issue that you would have to be mindful around that. Okay. So I thought I had, let me see. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm missing a slide, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to come back to you guys. I'm going to click out of here and I'm going to come back to you. Oh, I love this. Yes, yes, yes. Corn is, is okay. I've got lots of questions and I love questions. So I'm going to like scroll back so I can make sure. But, um, basically let me, before I answer questions, let me tell you a little bit more. So I've covered the philosophy, the foundational philosophy of the fundamental five protein, healthy fats, fiber, greens, and superfoods. And that is the fundamental five that you want on your plate every single meal. And of course, hydration is equally important. We need to make sure that we're hydrating every single day. So with that fundamental five, envision you've got your amazing hydration. I call it hydration with benefits because you can definitely add to your water things like lemon, aloe, aloe juice is amazing for coating your stomach lining and aiding in digestion. Chia seeds, if you can handle the, the them when they're they soften up, they become 10 times more dense when they are filled with water. So you're getting that additional hydration just by eating them and drinking them. So think about that too, when you're adding in all of those important fundamental, uh, fundamental five components with your hydration. So, um, I definitely, I'm going to, I'm going to answer questions first and then I'll tell you guys about the goodie that I'm going to give you. So hello, hello. Okay. I'm just scrolling down. And if you guys have any questions, add them in. So I get to them. Um, it must be okay. Uh, just seeing you same here. Zoom may be the next best way. She will send in a second. We will post. Okay. Oh, did you guys not see it? Oh, it's hard to see. Okay. Uh, geez, okay, I'm just reading these. All right, well, I hope that um, you guys just, I'm so sorry, I thought everybody was able to see my slides. I hope I did a good job of kind of talking through them um, so you guys knew exactly what you were seeing. Um, are sweet potatoes as bad starch wise as regular potatoes? No, and actually I did show a slide about that. So sweet potatoes are more on the light starchy side they're not as high, which means they don't convert as quickly. And like I said, if you want to take a sweet potato and you want to put some healthy fat on it, you want to drizzle a little avocado oil. Remember, you're slowing down to how it converts in your body. So that's another healthy way to do that. A little avocado oil. I like to do a little sea salt on there, even a little avocado. I'm sorry, olive oil, cold pressed, unrefined avocado oil. Um, is excellent on there after it's been cooked. So all of those pieces pairing with healthy fats, or if you put it on your plate, pair it with a healthy fat. So you have that as an option. Oh yeah, blueberries and strawberries are my favorite too. I love plant blood. Yes, plant blood, chlorophyll, incredibly important. And I love, want to talk about superfoods and spices. I love things like um, blue, green, algae, it's spirulina, um, that's all considered part of that plant blood piece too. that algae. Um, what is the rule for the right amount of daily water consumption? Ooh, Lori, good question. So what I like to tell my clients is that you take your body weight. And this is just an, an average. We, we can talk a little details, but basically you take your body weight, you divide it in half. And that is approximately the number of ounces you should be drinking for your body every day. Now, if you are someone who moves a lot throughout the day, if you're someone that does cardio, that's, that does a hard workout, that you're sweating a lot, you're going to need more. You're going to need more. And here's another little hydration with benefits tip. I also like to teach that when you sleep, when you are sleeping overnight, your body is working really hard on repairing, on digesting, on healing, on getting all that restorative sleep 
that it needs desperately to do its work throughout the day. So because of the amount of energy, because of the amount of energy that you've expended um, throughout the night, you wake up naturally dehydrated, okay? So keep that in mind when you wake up in the morning. Not only that, but because of the amount of en energy that your body has been expending overnight, in addition, your inflammatory levels are naturally increased overnight. So by the time you wake up, your cortisol levels are higher. So when you wake up, you've got that dehydration, and this is true for hopefully all of us, because our body is doing that incredibly important work overnight. So you are naturally dehydrated. And on top of that, you've got some increased inflammatory response going on or inflammatory levels that could lead to a response going on. So it's really important that we focus on hydrating as soon as we wake up. A couple of quick little hydration with benefit tips. Number one, what I like to do or I recommend to do for clients is as simple as a mason jar, a 32 ounce mason jar you can keep by your bed overnight. You can squeeze a little bit of lemon if you like that in there overnight. So when you wake up, when you put your feet on the floor, you you start drinking because I want to see ultimately if you're somebody that's just starting this, you want to start in about eight ounces and then go to about 10 to 12 increments and then 16 to 20 to 24. So by the time you are well versed in your hydration in the morning, you are at least hydrating at about 20 ounces that you're replenishing what you have lost. And in effect, you are also dialing down. And I like to recommend that everyone does this prior to eating in the morning. I know some take medication in the morning or maybe you like to take your probiotic in the morning. Um, if that's the case, you want to make sure that you hydrate first. That's really, really important. Okay. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Okay, yes, we saw them at the end and your narrative was excellent. Oh, thank you, Kathy, you're so sweet. How much does your sleep affect your metabolism? Jeanette, good question. Massive. I mean, you know, the body is a puzzle, right? So all of these pieces have to come together, fit together well for your body to function. Your metabolism is a very large part of your sleep function. Why? Again, it has to do with that reparative, that digestive piece that your body is doing overnight. If you're not getting the quality of sleep, number one, we'll talk about sleep first, and then I'll explain to you leading up to sleep. But if you're not getting the quality of sleep overnight that your body needs to do that digestion, that detoxing that your body is constantly doing, right? You, your metabolism will suffer for that you will start to hold on to weight. You will become insulin resistant. You'll start with the fat pads and then you know the story goes on and on. That quality, that deep sleep, the REM, going back and forth between the light, um, the light and the deep is really important. So if you're not getting that quality of sleep, and these are questions that you can ask yourself or that you can work with someone that can help you to identify where those deficits are happening, that is something that really needs to be paid attention to. So some questions to ask yourself around sleep cycles. Number one, what are you doing leading up to sleep? Okay, we've all talked about this. I'm gonna start with food first. Are you eating spicy, heavy, sugary, all of those things before you go to bed? How many, how long are you giving your body to rest and then fall asleep? Rest meaning rest from food right now. So how long are you giving your body? It should be, if you can, at least two hours, if not three. So you should stop eating and then just drinking something like water, chamomile tea, something caffeine free, staying away from caffeine, things like that, staying away from spicy. So it allows your body that time to start to settle down. Now, what is your night routine? look like? That's another thing to ask yourself. What does your sleep environment look like? What is your room? Is it cool? Is it warm? Is it dark? It should be all of those things. How are you um, working on creating a nice get ready to sleep environment? Are you reading or are you in front of blue light? You know, are you in front of the television? Are you on your tablet? Are you on your phone? You know, what are those things that you're doing? So a lot of questions you can ask yourself. Um, yikes, I drank 160 ounces today. Whoa, Lori. Now, Lori, I I'm not going to say that's 
that's bad. I mean, I maybe you're someone, are you do you work out a lot? Do you sweat a lot? I, I'm not sure. If you're losing a lot of water throughout the day, you do need to replenish that. Um, so, but yes, FYI, you can overhydrate as well. So be mindful about that. I'm not quite sure more on your story, but you can let me know here. Miss beginning, but we'll catch it. Absolutely, Suzanne. Does your metabolism change with age? Um, the answer is yes. Yeah, for sure. And especially when we're, I think I'm talking to quite a few women here, you know, our, when our hormonal, um, when our horm hormonal age changes, our, it does affect our metabolism, estrogen, you know, DHEA, testosterone, progesterone, all of those pieces, when those start to wax and wane, when we become, you know, going into that menopausal, that pre uh, peri and then post menopausal stage, it definitely can affect our metabolism. So it's really important that we're focusing um, on our metabolic health. Now there are things that we we can certainly do. We actually have to work a little bit harder and a little bit smarter about how we go about caring for our bodies. And it's just, it's really important that we are moving our body every single day, that we're eating a fundamental five plate, right? That we're eating as close as we can to whole foods, that we're we're getting that mindfulness component in there. That's why this beautiful IJY community is so important that Colette has, has cultivated here. That is such a beautiful, healthy component from movement to mindfulness, all of those pieces that are incredibly important to that holistic piece, that functional piece, that integrative piece that is health. Okay. I could talk about this all night, you guys. Why do we need require less sleep as we age? Um, I don't really agree with that statement, to be quite honest with you. And it is true that some um, women, some men require different amounts of sleep, depending upon your quality of sleep, too. Women tend to not get as much quality sleep as men. I'm sorry, any of the guys, if there's any guys on here, I apologize. I'm not trying to say anything bad about, but let's just say women, given that, you know, we, we just, the way our brains work, um, if you're a mom and you know, you're, you definitely, even if you have older children, um, you still have those tendencies, right? They're kind of built in, they're innate. I think people generally need a minimum of seven hours, if not more. Um, some people can function on less. I think it's amazing. Um, I'm not one of those people. If I get five or six hours of sleep, at least three or four nights, I'm I'm paying for it. Eventually, it's going to catch up with me, and I'm going to start to feel it. And I'm it's going to affect my mental status. It's going to affect affect my physical status. So, um, warehouse day. Buy a but a gallon a day is typical for me. Okay, that's good. That's great. Okay. Um, how important is breakfast? Oh, I like that. That's a good one, Colette. Um, yeah, so breakfast is super important um, in my book. Now, I don't like to call it breakfast, though, because when people hear the word breakfast, and this is food for thought for all of you, when they think of breakfast, they think it has to be in at like somewhere between 6 and 9 a.m., and I'm not one of those people that feel that way. I actually personally, I practice more of um, a, a an eating system that's like intermittent fasting, time time eating. I don't break my fast. I call it breaking your fast versus breakfast, but that's essentially the same thing. But it's just a mindset uh, thing. So I start. I break my fast around eleven typically somewhere between 10, 30 and 11 is when I will actually have my first meal. Um, it is, it's nine times out of 10, it's a smoothie. So you can consider that breakfast. Some people consider it lunch. Some people consider it both. Uh, but as long as it is a fundamental five meal, it has every, all of those components that you need. Um, I personally think your meal is incredibly, your first meal, whatever you want to call it is incredibly important. And as I just got finished teaching, it also is incredibly important what is in that because that is going to set the tone for how your body energizes, de uh, digests, functions, 
you know, all of those pieces metabolically functions throughout the course of the rest of the day. You are setting the tone with your first meal. Um, Colette is amazing, Lori. I agree. Colette is a rock star. Oh, okay. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. Breaking my fast breakfast. Love it. Does stress impact your metabolism? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you are stressed, your inflammatory response markers are going up. So um, that's really important. When you are stressed, all of those pieces, your neurotransmitters that, again, we talked about that super information highway at the very beginning that runs between your brain and your gut, your hormones, all of those pieces are definitely being affected. So if you're not doing anything to relieve and to let go, release that stress component, you're holding on to that. And a lot of times we don't even realize that we're doing it, but those inflammatory markers are on the rise. And unfortunately, and this is when I see a lot of clients, I like women and men who come to me before they get to this level that they've recognized that they have an inflammatory response going on that hasn't turned into a full blown something, but sometimes we don't. And sometimes we're not tuned in to those whispers. People like Colette can teach you how to tune into those whispers. So before it becomes a massive issue and you're dealing with something that you have to work really hard at reversing or dialing down all of those pieces, you can catch it if you are have a lower stress level, if you have mindfulness practices, if you're ha you have a, a good diet, you can hear those whispers. Your body is constantly talking to you. It's sharing information all day. Now the question is, are we tuned in and are we listening? So all of those practices, those that holistic practice can help you to do that. Okay. Um, just um, DHEA is a hormone, um, and it is an essential hormone that we all have, uh, men and women in your body. It helps to control your metabolic process, and it helps to control your endocrine health. And it works in conjunction with progesterone, with um, estrogen, with testosterone. Again, men and women both have it. And you will see as as we age again women lisa asked that i think yes as we age our hormones obviously because of our aging process start to become affected and i recommend that you get your hormone levels tested so you know where you are you know where your deficiencies are nutrition definitely plays plays a role in that but you know it's good obviously you know to to have a good physician that you are working with, that you're getting pieces checked. So you know where you're at, you know where you're deficient, all of those pieces. How do you curb a craving? Okay, okay, sugar, for goodness sake. Lisa, you're so funny, I love it. Um, yeah, okay, well, number one, hydration. Are you drinking enough water? Because sometimes we mistake our hunger cues for craving and our thirst cues for a craving. So sometimes we're just thirsty. So that's number one. Just do, I want you to do a quick assessment. Uh, have, how much have I drank today, water-wise? Not anything sugary, sweet, caffeinated, anything like that. But how much water have I drank? Number two, what does my plate look like? Because if I am getting the fundamental five on my plate, if I'm getting healthy protein, healthy fats, fiber, greens, and then those superfoods, some spices, if I have all of that on my plate, my body will be satiated, right? I will have, if I have the proper components and what my body needs tuned in to how many of those components I need on my plate. And the bulk of it, again, is those greens, are, are those low starchy vegetables. All of those are really important pieces. And then, of course, those healthy fats and the proteins. And I gave you a little hand piece for you guys to look at. So making sure that you have that, that will help to satiate you and will help to curb those cravings. And the first thing I always do, even for myself, if I'm having a craving, number one, I'll go for water first. I made it a habit with myself, right? So I'll go to water, I'll drink water first. Then if I'm still feeling like I need something, I'm not going to deny myself. 
It, you know, life is, if you want to play the 80, 20 rule, some people like to play the 90, 10 rule, but that is a good rule of life. And you've got to enjoy a little bit and you've got to give yourself that treat day. That's really important too. But if I'm still really craving it, I'm going to have it, but I'm going to be mindful about how I'm having it and how much of it I'm having. The third question I'm going to ask myself is I'm going to assess what did I have on my plate for my last meal? Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe something was missing there. I was a little off balance. Maybe I didn't have enough protein. Maybe I didn't have enough healthy fats. And then I'm going to start to tweak how much of that I actually have. Because if I'm having those cravings, nine times out of 10, again, if it's not thirst, you know, sometimes I just want what I want. I have a little bit of a sweet tooth. I do. But sometimes it's because we're not getting the enough of the right components on our plate. Okay. How did you? Water or wine? <laughs> well, a little bit of both. How about that? But choose good, clean wine. Uh, mines, chips, crunch, salt. Yeah, Nancy, that's a good one too. I know. I know. And again, same kind of assessment. Same kind of assessment. And you know how I feel about if you still want it after all that, give yourself a little bit, but be mindful about it. Don't take the entire chip bag, right? Just put a portion for yourself out and then walk away. Create something else. Create another distraction. Uh, <laughs> did yoga before this. Time for vino. Ah, Nancy. Um, cinnamon apple tea is a great craving buster. Yeah, Lori, that's awesome. Yes. All kinds of yummy, organic, um, caffeine-free, not decaffeinated, caffeine-free teas are great. And peppermint, if people like peppermint, that's a really good digestive tea, chamomile, uh, rubios. I really like rubios. It's a South African tea. I like moringa. That's a great Indian. Um, it's a it's a leaf. Excellent. Um, all of those things are really good for your digestion. Um, okay. Uh, Nancy Brown. Okay. Reading these as they come in. Guess that should have been a class. Clean wine. Oh, Darlene, clean wine. Yes. So what I mean by that, and you know, I, I'm so fascinated by uh, things like this and meeting people who work in these types of industries and just picking their brain. Um, and actually, I have a brand new podcast coming out. Uh, it'll be out. Hopefully, it'll be finished within the next month and a half. And I'm going to be interviewing people like this because it's so fascinating. The wine industry crazy fascinating and you know it's unfortunately it's one of those unregulated industries so i'm sure uh, you possibly have heard about you know um sulfite sulfate free wine now even with that after meeting some people that i've met that work in the clean wine industry they actually they call it dirty wine the clean wine is called dirty wine are you you're with me clean wine is dirty wine why because they keep all of the, what people call impurities, but actually it's all of the goodness, right? It's just like the mother and kombucha. It's all the goodness in there in the wine. So it's, but it's none of the, you know, the chemicals that are pumped in there. I know a lot of people like, um, I've heard of Scout and Cellar. Um, that's one that a lot of people find some good cleaner, cleaner, not clean, but cleaner wines in that are sulfite and uh, um, sulfite free kind of wine. Um, in addition to that, um, there's California dry wines, farm wine that I know um, ha have a cleaner option. So that's what I mean by clean wine. I hope that was helpful. Kale chips. Oh yeah. I love a good kale chip too. You can make your own and you can buy them. Really good. Um, okay. I hope I, I was helpful with that. I think if anybody else has any questions, put it in there. Oh, Lisa, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. I love this. And I love connecting with all of you. I just wish I could see your faces. Um, okay. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what I want to do for you guys for coming, attending. And if you're watching the replay, I'm going to do the same exact thing. Uh, so here's what I would love for you to do. And maybe um, my dear friend Colette can drop my um, website 
address uh, the URL into the comments for you guys to make it easy. We can also put it in the comments on the Facebook page under here. So if you go to my Facebook page, I'm sorry, I, I said Facebook, I didn't mean that. If you go to my website page and you sign up for my community, you can just by clicking on one of the free guides, I have a bunch of different ones on there. Um, you will become signed up for my community. I send out a weekly, a couple of weekly newsletters. I do one on Tuesdays, which is really a blog, what I'm blogging about for the week. Hopefully it's something interesting to you. I give new recipes, all kinds of goodness. And then every Thursday I have started this food for thought. Um, and it is basically something about, you know, something that I think we need to think more about. Um, this week I talked about um, actually uh, fast food. Um, and last week um, I talked about, um, oh gosh, I think I talked about uh, clean deodorant. So it's only to my, uh, to my community. So definitely if you go and you sign up there and you become part of my community, and then you come back to the comments and the Facebook group because we won't see them here after we end. But if you come back here and you comment, and if you're already a member, um, let me know. If you're already a community member of mine, what you're going to do is you're just going to write um, signed up in the comments on the Facebook, IJY Facebook group under this uh, replay. So write that in there. I am going to send you a hot off the press fundamental five guide ebook guide for you. It gives basically the 411 on what fundam the fundamental five is. It's going to give you some information, resources, and recipes. So I want to gift that to all of you for being here, for watching the replay, for being a part of Colette's amazing IJY community. She is such a rock star. Whoever said that, absolutely. And I love partnering with her. So I want to make sure that you guys get some real goodness. Um, so if you do that, so you, what you're going to do is sign up, go back into the comments on the Facebook um, group, and then you write signed up. I will make sure that you get that guide in your email. OK, I will check the comments. Um, I will talk to Colette about that. How does that sound? Oh, Lori, thank you. OK, and thank you, Colette. Awesome. She just put that in there and we'll also put it in the comments for you guys. It's in the comments and I've also got it scrolling across the bottom of the screen. So. Of course she does. I love it. <laughs> that was more than I expected. I learned so much tonight. How about everybody else, guys? Can you send some claps and applauses and um, things letting Jane know how much we appreciated her coming on tonight? Aww. And we will definitely make sure we put this in our replays so you guys can watch it again and send it out to your friends and get those parts that you might have missed. And like I said, Jane, you might want to tell them one more time exactly what you want them to do now that they have the website address. And All right, Chris. Chris is all signed up. Signed up. <laughs> I love it. Chris, you get the price for being first. <laughs> I love it. Chris, make sure, please, that you put it in the comments on the Facebook group so that I see it because this will go away um, and I won't see the comments. And I want to make sure that I don't miss anybody. So please, 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 as soon as Colette posts it to the Facebook group, make sure, and I'm saying it on here too for everybody, make sure that you post it under the comments on the Facebook group. Okay. Yes. Nancy, do the same thing. Um, Suzanne, do the same thing. Yeah. Kathy, do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> in fast and furious. <laughs> I love it. I love this group so much. And you'll also, um, you'll also keep up to date with all of the events I've got going on my programs. I host a lot of programs. I run online programs, so you'll get all kinds of good stuff. Oh, Kathy. Yeah, thank you. Part, guys. Roger, thank you. Person here. So hopefully her and I are going to be doing some events together, get her out to It's Just Yoga Fest. And I you guys can meet her in person. And she has, if you go on her Instagram, she has a lot, a lot of followers. And they're not all as lucky as you are to have her right here in your backyard. So we're very blessed to have some great experts like this right here in the Central Florida community. Thank you, Colette. 
Thank you. I think I think the world of you and I love this beautiful community that you've created. It's such a great nurturing spot and will help so many and empower so many to live a healthy life. And that's what it what it's all about. Right. That's why we do what we do. Thank you, darling. Good night, everybody. We will Bye, get this ready. Thank you so much. Time. Have a good night. Bye. Bye bye.